Hi everybody, it's Pam, Silver and Sparkles, and I am excited to do a video today to show you some of the fun things that you can make um, with, with papers. And I have some paper packs listed in my Etsy shop and had um, thought that it would be fun to show you some of the different things you could make um, with, with the packs that I have. Uh, and just some basic supplies. So that's what we're going to do. I haven't prepped for this, and except that I have made a list of 10 ideas of things that we can make, and I'm going to try to make each of those. Some are simple, some are a little more complex. Um, but anyway, in the paper packs, you get at least 30 pieces um, from my personal collection, um, and you may not get exactly you know, what I have out today, but it's very similar from the same books or types of books. And, um, you know, but, but obviously they're not the same pages, right? Cause these are all originals. None of this is something that, you know, was like a digital or anything like that. Um, and I've made some others that I'm going to be posting that are almost exactly the same, except a few things I ran out of. Right. And so I added something a little different. Um, so certainly a variety of book pages, dictionary paper. I've got a little guest check there. This is a book page, but it has a pretty flower. This is a really old children's book, um, book page, right? Um, I did add a sheet of stickers from a sticker book that I have in each one. This one, a sticker has been used. The ones that are in Etsy, on my Etsy shop, of course, are a full sheet, not, not partially used, but this is just one of mine. Um, this is another piece of dictionary paper. And I had this really cool, um, look at that, spam, um, vintage magazine. You can see how big the magazine it is. These pages I did fold in half um, and put a couple in each pack. So they're so different. There's some like recipes that might be a fun thing to do. Um, most of them have a piece of Eden Holden um, Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady um, in there. Um, some of my newer ones have some other things because I um, what what's left of the Eden Holden papers that I currently have aren't great. So I do have some more on order though, and we'll add some more soon. Um, I did have this one fabulous book that had these ladies in it and. Unfortunately, they're all gone too. So the newer packs will have hopefully something just as fabulous, um, but um, not not those ladies. So anyway, again, they're all a little different. Basically the same though, with a variety of vintage, all different textures and feels. Um, papers. I did add a sheet of. Um, birds um, in each pack. Uh, one of the, the plates, they're beautiful. The texture of this paper is phenomenal. If you if you bought one of the packs and get this, leave a comment and tell people about what that paper feels like. It's amazing. Um, this is from a really old cookbook and a lot of the ones in the pack actually have images, but, but that one didn't in, in the pack I'm using today. Um, loved this book. The trees, each of them has a few from some type of atlas book, one or two, some music sheet. This is another one of my favorite books. This is Janet Marsh's uh, Nature Diary. So a page of that, and it's really sturdy paper, even though it's old and vintage, it's really thick. So, and this is also, um, remember the name of this one, um, Butterfly something. Let me reach over, I think I have it nearby. Bright Wings of Summer, um, and some people got really lucky in their kits, and some of these images, um, this one I've really been well-loved. Um, some got the black and whites, some got color of the butterflies, um, depending on just what I randomly pulled. Uh, some great ledger paper. Most kits have like one sheet of that, so we won't cheat. We'll just use one, one sheet as well. 
Okay, so a variety, and um, if that's something you're interested in, there may still be some available, but honestly, again, use whatever papers you have or things you have on hand. Um, but I know it's fun to get a variety and of things you don't normally have available um, and all the different colors and textures and sizes. So I made a list of things that we can make and some are super simple, some I already have like how-to videos, so we may go through those kind of quickly. Um, but to just really show you with just some basic supplies, some really pretty things that you could make. So, um, will have at it and, and of course you can always make lots of ephemera and things so some of the things on here you know I said of course we can make tags so we'll make some cute tags um a thing that I thought might be fun if I can go back and start with a basic a lot I, you guys know I love to add extra journaling spaces in my journals and so I make um, different kinds of journaling spots. And a lot of times the front is some type of collage or decorated and then you flip it on the back. A lot of times I'll use my coffee dyed or tea dyed paper then for the writing space. And of course you can jazz them up by sewing them, by adding stickers, you know, other images, um, making snippets to go on and those types of things. The, the, really endless options. Um, so I thought one thing we would do is just kind of make a journaling spot that would be really cute. So I am going to pick randomly one of our um, just full pages that has text on it. And this one again, nice and thick and um, has some nice aging and color to it. And I'm just gonna use my ruler and I'm gonna tear off the white, the white sections. So we mostly use the parts that have text. And um, so this is gonna, this is a pretty nice large size um, journaling spot. Um, I just thought of something else that would be fun to make too. I just have so many ideas. Um, this is gonna be the size of our journaling spot. And I do wanna decorate the front some. And then on the back, we are gonna layer using some of this ledger paper, a piece that's a little bit, slightly smaller, right? We'll still have more of this to use later. Um, I, I'm not measuring, guys, I'm eyeballing. Um, layer on the back. So, and it'll also give it, you know, that extra thickness. And um, I'm probably gonna end up making a mess. I'm just warning you guys now, today is going to be a messy crafty day. Um, I'm gonna cut that just a little bit shorter because I like having a little bit of a border. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. All right, there we go. So when I talked about basic supplies, you know, a pair of scissors, a ruler, if you have it, that would be helpful, um, adhesive, glue, um, and of course, I'm gonna use my favorite wet white glue. Hmm, which side do I want? I think I'm gonna use this side because I like that line. Um, and this ledger paper came from a really old um, ledger book but it's still in nice shape and not too fragile or frail. So it is good for backing um, your pages. But anyway, back to my glue. Those of you that watch my videos know that I do have a favorite wet white glue and it's just the art glitter glue. And I put it in the little bottles to make it easier to see. Now we could spend time and do a lot of inking and, um, and really, getting everything looking really nice and aged and vintagey and later I might spend some time depending on what we're making but just know for me that's kind of a given um and obviously I probably need to add a little ink to my dauber okay so it'll start to come to life there all right, so then this is gonna be an insert. You can write on this side. So let's decorate the front with some of the papers that are included in the paper pack. Um, well, an easy place to start would be to add um, these flowers. So I'm gonna 
carefully tear, and I could have used my scissors, but I like the torn edge. And I'm not sure what else I'm going to want to use this piece of paper for, so I'm trying to be careful as I tear, so I still have all of this to use. All right, we'll get a little more off the edge here. All right, so there's a flower, and let's find something else to layer on here. Um, maybe part of this image, this is a, you know what, I'm gonna save this. This is a really nice thick piece of paper. Um, so how about a little bit of uh, music? Just get a little bit of that to, to layer on. And again, you could save these because if you've got a pen or a pencil marker, we could write some words um, and, and really use every little bit of the straps. And the same when I ripped these edges off, you know, you can save those. Um, I just threw them over here to the side, but if, if you then need them or want them. All right, I'm gonna cut or tear, not cut, tear a section. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And this one, I'm gonna, the edge be a little rough. Um, this paper is quite fragile. And um, so, you know, we wanna be careful with it. Let's see what else we have that might be a nice little addition. Um, don't forget too that, um, and these are super fragile as well, that using a paper punch to just add, get some color or something might be fun too. So I am gonna see what punches I have close by. Maybe this one, it's an old Stampin' Up one. It's the shape kind of a, of a tag. Let's see. We'll see how this does. Again, I'm just winging it just to add a little interest. And then, how about maybe a little more um, something with some color? Ooh. These words are really cool too. I think I'm gonna, hmm, I wanted something kind of um, long or horizontal. Yeah, I don't really want a slug today. So we'll just get a little strip of this to add a little interest. And it kind of tore the slug, but it left this cute thing that we could use for our cluster or something later. Hmm. Yeah, this is gonna come together cute. Not sure where I'm gonna use this yet. And then we are gonna um, add something, some kind of saying or quote or words. Um, grab a brown pen. Let's see, how about we write um, you can do hard things. Good reminder, good affirmation. And it's gonna just add a little extra to our journaling spot. Um, and then again, you can imagine having this tucked in and then on the back, you can write whatever it is you're wanting to write, or if you want to use this as like a note to someone um, that they can then save and keep. Um, I think that would be great. All right, so this is going to switch around a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to tell where I'm going to like something until I get some of the ink on it. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, when I have a pile of wonderful papers to work with, a lot of times I, I just kind of jump in and start. And um, I actually want this to not be quite so wide. Um, and sometimes I have things thought out ahead of time, or I, I have a quote, 
or a pretty image that I know I want to use. Um, in fact, I might even end up layering like this um, that I know I want to use, and that kind of gets me started. But sometimes I don't, and um, that's sometimes some of the fun kind of collaging or crafting as well when you just let the what what you have on your desk or the supplies that you've pulled out help determine where you're going. Okay, so this can be layered lots of different ways, whatever is appealing to you. And um, if you were wanting a collection of journaling cards, there's enough here, of course, for you to um, make multiples if you would like to have a little set of them. Okay, so bring that over, and I think this is going to go this direction, and I don't even know, I didn't even look to see what they were making here, but it's really just to add interest. Okay, now I will probably make sure this is inked really well. And you could add, um, again, in the spirit of doing basic supplies, I'm not, I'm not going to right now, but you could add lace, you could add ribbon, you could sew around the edges. Um, lots of things you could do to take, the, you know, to continue to elevate this. But there's a journaling spot card made with our paper pack. All right, so that was one idea. I'm gonna set it aside. And of course, in my mess, my list of ideas has disappeared let's see I was kind of starting at the bottom okay well a journaling spot a collage we kind of did did both of those in one but certainly just a standalone collage or a collage for a card um let's make one of my ideas was to make a mini journal and obviously you can also use any of these pages inside a journal you're making you know for to have for the pages which that would be really fun but um, I wanted to take um, and make like a mini, a mini journal um, and pick something for the cover. And I'm thinking this uh, very fragile uh, map page from a really old book would make a really neat cover. Um, but I'm going to need to... to it to be sturdier than this. It is um, a very, very fragile paper, and that's where I'm, this is going to come into to play. Even though this is kind of a fun image, I am going to sacrifice it um, for, for the good of the cause. So I do want this to not have that torn edge right there, but again, good paper to save. Um, now, we could make this any size. If I just fold it in half, this would be the size, but I think I want mine to be even a little bit smaller when I say a mini journal. Let's make it one, two, three, let's make it four inches tall. No, let's do four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. And then if we just fold that in half, it'll be kind of a nice square one. Um, but I'm going to make it not quite a square. And this gives me this lovely white paper um, to use later. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we ended up with. We ended up being four and a half by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half, which makes it three and a quarter. All right, so the, the dimensions, if you wanna make one of these, are three and a quarter by four and a half. That's kind of a cute size. And this is gonna be just a soft-sided little mini journal. It's not gonna have a big spine or anything. And we're gonna add some fun papers and things in here. But first, let's make the cover, okay? So I said I wanted to use some of the um, pretty images here from this piece of map page. So I just said it's four and a half 
by three and a quarter. So that's a half an inch. I'm using my grid line here to help me. I'm gonna um, cut this piece to be so that there's a little bit of an edge. We're gonna do it um, four and a quarter by three. All right, so this is gonna make this four and a quarter inches tall. And I'm okay tearing all the way across because I want the front and the back covered. <laughs> okay, and then um, I said I needed it to be three inches. Right? I hope I did said that. What did I say I needed it to be? No. Ha! I needed to be three and a half inches. Yay! Measure twice. Tear. Cut once. One, two, three and a half. And I'm going to go from this side. So I get this border here because I kind of like it. One, two, three and a half. Okay, I hope that was clear what I did, and I'm just using my grid. I did flip my pad around so the numbers are all backwards and off now. Um, it had just gotten so worn here where I tend to work a lot. I just flipped it. I think this one, it does. I can turn it over, too, and use the other side when this gets worn down. So that'll be a fun thing to do here soon. All right. So this could be the front, this could be the back, or I could do it the other way. Have this be the back, but I think I'm gonna make this be the front. This paper is so fragile. I'm a little nervous even trying to ink it that I'm gonna end up tearing it. So I'm gonna be very, very gentle and just let the natural aging um, be 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 what it is because I do not want not that I couldn't fix it you know we could repair it it's okay if it has a tear and we could glue it down and still use it but I'm trying to be respectful and careful and gentle with my paper okay ah, I love it all right and then for the back cover we're just gonna glue this down and again, you could we could have picked any of the papers in here for the cover. Um, if you didn't want to use the papers that came with the paper pack, you know you could have used something else for the um, to to be the actual uh, journal cover and not use this paper for that. Um, I was just trying to show you with only using a paper pack what you could make. But certainly, um, you know, if, if you want to save this for something more special or to be a featured, then do that. But I am going to leave their faces um, there on the front inside cover because I love it. I may end up doing a pocket or something on this back cover. Isn't that fun? Okay. And this paper is nice and sturdy. So we can give it a nice... Um, a nice inking if we want to. Okay, now I probably am not going to leave the front super plain like that, but but we'll see. Let's see, see what all I get into. Let's first pick some pages for the inside. And again, we're gonna want pages that are no more than about seven and a quarter, seven inches in length, because we're gonna be folding them a half, and definitely no more than like a quarter, a quarter, four and a quarter inches tall. So some inside pages. So this is where I will most likely go back to, we might use a little bit of the ledger paper, um, some of the, the book page here. I think, um, I'm trying to keep my scraps. I think another thing that would be fun, and, and, and by the way, the pages don't have to be the same size. That gives it some interest and texture as well. Um, I don't know if it gives it texture. It gives it some interest and um, makes it look a little different. 
Ooh, that'll be good because that'll have some good writing space. I was looking, we'll use a sticker here in a minute. I was looking for the, um, ooh, this. The um, guest check. This will be fun too. Um, because you actually you end up with two pages and it is the, um, what is that called? If you write on this, it'll transfer here. Transfer paper? Not sure. Okay. <laughs> Pam, find your words. All right, I'm going to fold this. Go ahead and fold it in half. Um, this page needs to be trimmed down, and I am eyeballing it, mostly for time's sake. Um, I say we don't want to be more than like seven and a quarter, so we'll just pull some off. I like, like I said, I like the pages having a lot of different um, sizes. Another thing you can do is off fold. So even though it'll be bound here, um, the pages can be a little bit, I'll do it with this one, a little bit different sizes um, in, in the journal. I do that a lot with my golden book junk journals that I make too. They um, tend to, you know, they're, they're very square. So finding pages um, that are the right size or big enough is kind of hard, but you can do an off cut, um, or not an off cut, you can off fold it, fold it off center, and then have a nice big page and then a skinny page and do it lots of different ways. So um, I encourage you to play with that too when you're assembling your journals. All right, I am trying, I don't know if this will even be on camera later, to put all of these scraps kind of up here so I can find them as we go. All right, I made this page a little bit narrower. How many pages do we have? We have one. We can count that as two, three, four. Yeah, and let's do a piece of this ledger paper. And we'll call it a day. So it'll end up being 10 pages. And um, I think that'll be fun. This might be a little too wide. In my effort to not want to measure today, I am definitely using the eyeball method. I think I'm gonna, um, but how do I wanna do this? I kinda like the Guinness check peeking out a little bit. All right, see how they're all different sizes and that's kinda cute and fun? All right, so those are gonna be the pages for our journal. And they fit in there nice. Little, Oh, no, it's okay. They fit in there nice. Maybe a smidge long on this one edge here, which I'm just going to tear off. There we go. All right, now, when I, you know, I'm not going to sew this one together. If my, if I can find my stapler, we're going to staple this baby. Um, let's see. See, this one doesn't have enough of a reach. Where is my big stapler, Pam? Where did you put your big stapler? We don't know. All right, we're gonna just hope this holds it together enough, even with those skinny papers. If I had my big stapler and I could get to it, I would put staple here, here, and here. Um, but I am, for time's sake, trying to make this go quickly. Um, I have lots of ideas I want to show you. So I think that's okay. I'll find my stapler later and put another one there, but it's holding together just fine. It's cute. And um, I like it. It's going to go this way. Now, I was thinking for the front. Oh, I'm getting a spam call on my watch. We'll just ignore that. Okay. I think these little mushrooms are gonna be cute. Now, the stickers, and I can't remember the name of the sticker book these came from, but um, they have the white around them. There's all kinds of videos, I haven't done one, but on how you can 
um, transfer these and make them into clear stickers by using packing tape and some water. It's a really neat technique. I may try to do a video for you guys, but I'm sure you can just search for that. You can also do what I'm doing and just kind of ink the sticker up if you don't want it to be quite so bright white. Um, but the white is also good too. Um, they are a little bit gloss, not, I wouldn't say glossy, they're not matte. So you do need to let this um, ink kind of um, set a little bit. Because I've been touching it a bunch with my fingers to put the ink on, I am gonna add some glue to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. But they, they stick pretty well. And I'm gonna put this about here. I'm gonna have ink all over me before our project is over. And then I am going to um, write, I'm gonna write, I'm not feeling very inspired. I'm gonna write, enjoy the journey. Okay, so a couple of things, little, little bitty journals like this, they're great and you can go in and um, collage in them. There's a little bit of writing space. You can always glue a, a plainer piece of paper over some of these. There's some nice writing spaces on these pages. Um, and you can use it, you know, like a little journal. Another thing that sometimes these are nice to do is this one isn't super chunky or anything. It'd be a nice insert in a journal. And then if you wanted to, you can just rip these pages out and use them in your art journaling or collaging um, as a as a paper source or like, you know, as a, as a scrappy pad or something. And I've done videos on scrapping, scrap, making scrappy pads. Um, so that would be um, something to think about too, even though I'm calling this one, you know, a mini journal. There's lots of different ways you can use these. All right, and I thought because we have the map, enjoy the journey, and there you go. We could add a pocket. Why don't we do that? I did one of my ideas of things you can make with a paper pack is pockets, and there's a lot of different kinds of pockets, obviously, but we will make, um, again, I need a piece of paper that has a little bit, that's a little bit sturdy. I'm I already have an idea for some tags I want to make with this one. Um, a little bit sturdy. This is some sturdy paper. Now, it doesn't have a lot of color to it, so we may layer this with something else. So I'm going to eyeball a corner. Ta-da! Turn it into a pocket. But again, it doesn't have much interest because it's just a little piece of edge of a book page. So um, once I glue it down, we'll decorate it. And again, you just add glue to these two sides. Uh, somebody told me, or I saw it on a video, hold the middle or hold the section that you want to leave open with your fingers and that way you don't accidentally glue the wrong side. <laughs> Uh, which is fun. But when you're making angled pockets, you know not to glue the angled side. Now, let's find something pretty. This is where this is going to come in. Um, instead of fussy cutting it, I am going to circle punch it. And um, I'm trimming this off so my circle punch have a little more of a reach. There we go. All right, and this was a one and three quarter inch circle punch. There, won't that look cute? And of course you could keep going. You could turn this into a cluster, which is one of the ideas I have of things we can make with these papers. Um, we could layer another pocket here. Just keep, keep going, right? So the whole idea is even from what seems like pretty humble, supplies we can make some pretty cool things all right so now we have a little mini journal that we could just keep going but we're gonna stop there 
And then let's pull out this page. Um, I said I really wanted to make some pretty, some fun tags, which is always a great go-to project. So this page, now again, everybody's is different that came in the kits, but I think most of them, of the current ones that are up right now anyway, have a page of this in there, um, most of them. Um, this particular page, front and back, had the pretty images, um, right? on both sides and so I'm being careful as I tr tear them, tr you know, whoops, trim the images so that I can use all of them and not just from one side. Now sometimes, unfortunately, your paper out of a book, you love the um, images on both sides and in fact that's going to be my problem. It's a little bit where I got that little circle punch. I had to be careful how I use that paper, but look at my Edith Holden page. How am I ever gonna decide which side to use? And, and this is where this one might be great to use as just paper in a journal to give pretty pops of color and images to look at and not cover them up. Um, or again, use them as a page in a journal and you could put a tiny pocket, you know, in a corner or something like that. Um, it's just really hard to decide. It would be a neat flip out in a journal. Maybe, maybe we'll use it for that. Um, but luckily on this page, the way they did the images, I am able to get four out of the paper that just happened to be in the pack I grabbed to use today. All right, look at that, yay. All right, so we're just gonna make some simple tags with these. And again, um, you can keep going and, and make these as fancy or as simple as you want, whoops be nice if I tore it somewhat straight, but it's okay. Um, now again, I have all these scraps and I'm gonna, this is nice, again, paper that's not deteriorating too much yet. So we're gonna set these here because we may make some little um, tabs and things for them. Now normally, you know, I love to layer, um, layer my tags and get all kinds of texture. So we're probably gonna do that. Even though this paper is thick enough, we, we could skip that. So we're gonna do it for aesthetic reasons. And look at me saving every little piece of scrap. Okay, so I have four here. And this is where, again, if you've got your supplies at home, you don't necessarily have to use what, what you got in your pack. Um, or use your pretties. <laughs> you could use just some uh, plain card stock. You could use um, pages that just aren't as interesting to you. That type of thing. Okay, this is a paper from a West, the Great West, a book that I have, and it's old, early turn of the century. Um, but the paper, again, the quality they used, and it was just obviously the book was well cared for. So um, great quality of paper. I love the color and I love how it feels. And we have some great text and white space we can use. So I have four pretty big tags. So we may not be able to get all four on this paper because I do want to have some text in the background. But I'm going to try to lay them out. We can get three of them maybe. Um, maybe not, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna just start going for it. So this is a large one. I'm going to use the text to help me get my ruler straight. And then, um, we'll layer this one on. And again, for time's sake, what I may do is just um, do a few few of these, and then we'll you you'll get the idea. But we'll see. It is kind of fun to see 
the many things that could be made. All right. So um, while I am just tearing paper to layer these tags, I'm gonna, um, I've been trying to decide if I'm gonna do a big announcement video or what I'm gonna do, but um, I talked about this in one of my other videos briefly, so I thought I'd talk about it a little today since everything is moving forward. So I, um, I think many of you know I, I work full time and have been able to do my Silver Sparkles fun and adventures um, you know, when I have free time and, and on the weekends, that kind of thing. Um, but I decided a while back um, that I'm ready to do my craft business and my fun business um, all the time. It's my full-time thing. So I have resigned from my job. And next week is my last week. Um, and I've had a great career. Um, in rehabilitation and helping people um, with a variety of disabilities with employment. That's been my primary focus and done it for, for many years. Um, I think my first job in the field was before I even graduated from, from undergrad. Um, I worked as a job coach. So um, since like 1990. <laughs> So I'm showing my age, uh, but anyway, um, I've had a great career, and I still have, I still have a lot of energy and a lot, a lot left to give. But I have wanted to um, launch this business in a little bit different way. Um, keep doing my videos, my Instagram, and those things. Um, but I am also opening um, a, a a little vendor, stand, shop, whatever, in a larger store that's going to be opening this April. So I'll be sharing some information about that if you're interested and want to join me on that journey too, to see what that's all about as I do more of a, a retail brick and mortar kind of presence um, here locally in Virginia. And then I also have a plan, um, to of course, keep my online presence, my Etsy shop and all those fun things. But um I'm hoping to launch some workshops uh, and retreats for women. Um, oh, well, for anyone. Um, but I'm primarily, I think my target audience will be, you know, women who would like to use art, art therapy, um, journaling, all of that, you know, to help as we, you know, just find ways to relieve stress and express ourselves in different ways and use words and images and, and all of that for healing and, and when we're in transition or, or dealing with some of life's tough stuff. So anyway, that's my plan. Um, I'm hoping in the next three to six months to have some of those um, organized and planned out and available. So if you're interested, I hope you'll follow along. Let me know if that sounds like something you would enjoy. Um, like I said, I'm kind of in the early planning stages, but I have lots of great ideas of things we could do together, like in an afternoon, just workshop, coming together to craft. Um, and a full-blown maybe, you know, weekend or several-day uh, retreat um, to, 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 boom, to talk about some things and how you can use um, journaling and um, the things you enjoy and the crafts, the paper kind of crafts or things that you like and poetry, writing, whatever it is, um, to help you all and, and, and help you as you move forward or as you're making some big decisions. So um, on one hand, I'm kind of saying what I'm doing with my career is kind of taking a career break from the big, um, from the big jobs. You know, the last few years I've um, had, had a lot of responsibility in state government and I'm kind of excited to share what I've learned and take a break from that and that it's okay to step back and listen to to our hearts and our minds and our bodies. So anyway, if something like that is interesting to you, let me know, let me know, because that'll encourage me to, to keep pressing forward um, and consider ways um, ways to make that happen for all of us. So. Anyway, that was a big spiel on my dream and what I'm working on. Right now I'm making a, a tag topper. Um, but yes, I 
I'm excited. I am so lucky to have the support of my husband and friends and family to just go ahead and take the plunge and, and listen to my heart on this. So um, that's that's the big, big news. Um, and I can't wait um, to, to, that's what I'm going to be able to focus on um, the majority of the time and not just when I find a few hours here and there. So anyway, okay, so what am I doing here? I used one of those off cuts to make just in, instead of like a piece of ribbon, right? Because I didn't add any ribbon in these kits. I just used a piece of paper. How cute is that? Now, like I said, you can just keep going, right? Like it's never ending what you could do. I think it would be cute. I'm going to find a little paper punch, a little circle. I'm going to find something with some color um, or design that would be fun to add as a little to, to that little topper and I haven't done a great job staying organized over here um let's see I think this is back to that recipe uh one that we had you know a little bit of lettuce I don't know if it'll even look like lettuce but the colors certainly worked didn't they that got Got lucky with that all right so that just gives it a little more interest and again if you had your supplies at home you could put a brag there you could put an eyelid you could add ribbons there's all kinds of things you could do but that just kind of takes it up a level right um you could do one on the side that's a little bit wider why don't we do that on this one just to show you more ideas so this one I'm gonna fold always and I'm just gonna tear it since I'm going with that torn edged look today Isn't that cute um, so I made it kind of skinny kind of long and this one it might be fun to write a word on there um, or a, you know a little bit of an inspiration so this is kind of nature stuff. Um, nothing's coming to me right now, but I will leave it blank. And then certainly, you know, you could put in there something about, you know, if it's a nature journal or um, a little quote about being outside or something like that. But we're going to leave it blank for now so that I can write on there later. All right. And then this one you can keep embellishing too. All right, but we'll stop there. This one we didn't get to, um, but we've made those. I'm gonna put that in the pile of things that we've made. Um, let's see. Oh, you know, let's just do a simple pocket um, that you can then stuff with things that you make. So again, I'm gonna go for a piece of the book page. Now we could, um, trim the edges off if we wanted to, but I'm not going to on this one. Now this is all over. I did not come up with this. You've probably seen this a bunch of times if you watch videos, but I'll go through it with you, how you can just fold it and get, I think it's like three, three insert spots. So lay your paper horizontally and then take the right bottom corner and fold it up towards the top. And you know, you just kind of want it, eyeball it to where it looks like it's they're about even. And I guess I could have used the grid paper to help me line it up, but okay. So now you have that horizontal fold. So now you're gonna turn it. Now you're gonna take the left side and you're gonna fold it about a third of the way. And then you're gonna take the right side and fold it back over. Now, again, this could end up lots of different widths and things depending on how you choose to do the folds. All right, now, here's the fun thing. You've got a pocket, a pocket, three, actually four spots. This could be glued down to a page. It could be the front of a card. We could trim this off and make it um, more even. We can leave those there for some interest. If you want to, go ahead before you glue if you want to really get this inked up well, you could add, like, 
again, washi tape along the edges. You could even use washi tape to help hold it together, right? There are so many videos on making these, and this is just one pocket fold, but it is um, a, a way if you want to like mass make some to have ready for your journals and use some of those book pages maybe that you have on hand. Um, there you go. So now to glue it, again, you could use tape, you could use other things, but we're just gonna use glue. So I put glue just right along that one piece of the bottom flap, and then right along this one. Now, if you want, you could glue here and make that a you know, smaller opening. Again, lots of options. So now, it would be fun. I think the tags we made are too big, but you know, we could make tags and things to go inside of our little pocket. So um, we're not gonna do that right now, but that those are more things you can make with your papers because we've already made some tags. So we'll set that aside. Um, an envelope, um, again, there's lots of videos on making envelopes. But we're gonna, I'm gonna do one and I'm gonna use this really pretty paper. You're gonna say, Pam, why are you using that pretty paper to make an envelope? Because an envelope can be beautiful too. <laughs> and a great addition um, to glue into a journal, tuck into a journal, of course uses a happy mail, any of those things. So one of the easy ways to make an envelope is start with a square piece of paper. So let's see. And this has a pretty rough edge, but I think it's going to be okay. So this is six inches. So I want to tear it again at six inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, so that we have a square. Now I still have all of this to use. And I have this fun, this would be make a really fun tag um, to go in a, in, into something. Okay, so if you start off with any square piece of paper, <laughs> now a lot of times I will eyeball it, but I am going to show you how to have a better chance of it lining up is to um, mark the center. So we know our paper is six by six, so that means it is three inches by three three inches, so this is the center of our paper, right here, that dot. I hope you can see that on the camera. And then um, we're gonna fold the bottom corner up to the center dot. And then we're gonna fold each side over. Now if you go just to the center dot, um, it doesn't quite overlap, so overlap it, and I'm gonna do just a smidge. And I'm gonna overlap oh, just a smidge. And I'm trying to make it nice and straight, otherwise the envelope looks a little cattywampus. Um, and you can decide how much you want to fold it down. And it's a little bit cattywampus, but I'm okay with it. Um, you could also score these lines to help with that cattywampusness. <laughs> Look how pretty. And I made this one kind of square, but if I had folded it here, it would have been taller this way, but lots of ways to do it. Um, and you don't have to start with a square. Um, you can start with a rectangle and just adjust your folds. Again, lots of videos on how to fold an envelope. I also had the envelope punch by We Are Memory Makers, I think. And it's one I love to use, but, but you really don't need it. You still have to do all the work and the folding and stuff. So there we go. We have a cute envelope. We can put a card in there. And that's sweet. I love that. Okay. Um, obviously, and I'm not going to make all of these. I came up with these 10 ideas. So... Um, you can make snippets. I have videos on how to do that. You can make um, clusters. I did a video, I think it was my top five ways to use up paper scraps, had both of those. Um, I already talked about using them as your pages in a journal. You can make a card, you can make a collage master board, or just a collage like we did on our journaling card. Um, 
that we did the journaling spot. One of the things I did want to talk about was, and then we'll stop, is how I could use this page that I don't want to lose the front or the back on. Um, so first of all, I am going to attempt to get these little these little boogers off of here um, without losing too much real estate. Um, just holding that metal ruler down. And I didn't do too well, but we can also use the scissor method. There we go. All right, I got some of those off. Now, if I was gonna add this to a journal um, that's already made or a journal that I have that I'm working in, I've got a couple of ideas and I'm gonna pull out one of my journals. You guys have seen this one before. My big ledger journal. Um, let's see, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I have prepped some pages here. So it would be fun if you got to this page, right? And then this would just open up and you'd be able to look at, and you could do it on either side, right? You could look at these pretty images. You could even adhere it this way and let it open this way. Now, because this, for this journal, it's almost a little bit too wide, I am gonna fold it, but if it wasn't too wide and you didn't want to fold it, you could add a paper hinge um, just by adding some paper to it. Now, it probably would have helped if I had scored this to get it straight. So we're gonna go back and slow down and score it to make it a little bit easier for me. I'm not using my scoreboard, I'm just using the ruler and my bone folder. because I already folded, it's kind of a mess. Okay, so now when you get to this page, it's gonna be here and then it's gonna open like that. Or I can, no, let's do it on this side here and it'll open up. And again, if you don't mind covering up some of the pretty, you could add pockets, um, you could add all kinds of things. But underneath, it's kind of like, now you have a hidden place to journal. If you open the page, you really see the images. Um, and we'll talk about how to adhere it down. So this is just the simplest of the ways to do it. We're literally just gonna glue it down. Um, I'm pretty sure in my series where I talked about junk journaling ideas, one of the ideas was how to make a page flip and we added a hinge. Um, so you can always go check that out. Okay. Super simple. Now we could, and I think I will, ooh, look, this might be fun. This is what I was saying we could make into a tag. We, we could line this with some of the paper from our kit. So how about a little bit of music? Um, and we can get it the right length and our height and everything. So I'm gonna tear off a strip of the music paper because it's gonna be a thin, piece that I'm going to add here. Um, and this is just, again, not, doesn't hold it in. It's just going to make it look a little bit prettier when you open it up and see that edge. All right. And help preserve that a little bit, hopefully. Hmm could make it a whole edge and then you see that I think I want it the same height as this paper so I am going to um, tear it off kind of to line up um, instead of having it hanging over all right um, I could ink it but again very fragile paper and I'm okay with it not being inked right now all right um, after I get this glued down, we're going to take a look at the, what we've made today. I have no idea how long we've been crafting. I don't like my videos to be too, too long. I sometimes think that's overwhelming. But 
this will definitely get you started with your paper pack. Look how cute. Um, if you want, you could add um, one of the Velcro dots or um, a little piece of paper that this could slide up under to help hold it closed. But I think it's okay right now. All right. So one idea was to make a paper flip so we don't lose the pretty sides of that piece of paper. Let's see, what else did we make? We made a pretty envelope. Um, we made a really simple pocket that can now be glued down to a page. We made this set of pretty tags, right? Um, a journaling spot. And again, this would fit nicely in a pocket in a journal tucked into a letter or a card for someone. And then we made the mini journal or the scrappy pad, whatever you want to decide this is that has um, a nice pocket inside. Find one of our scraps to put in there. Okay, so that's what we made today. Um, and look, I saved all these little pieces so that I can use those and we still, 30 pieces, it's at least 30, I think some have a few more um, pieces of paper. Um, and we still have a lot left that we didn't even get to use. I can't wait to make something with this spam. <laughs> um, we have a whole sheet there and lots. We didn't use any dictionary page. Um, lots of stickers, this lovely lady. So still lots of crafting left to do. Oh, forgot that I had the birds. Um, we could have made something pretty with those and with these flowers and still lots of book page left. So I hope that this inspired you to make your own paper pack um, and set that out on your desk and challenge yourself. I'm only going to use these pieces of paper. <laughs> um, or if you're interested or you need some, some new papers and some new scraps, um, jump over to my Etsy shop. Hopefully there's still some there. If not, send me a message. Ask me to add some more if you're watching this video later and you, you'd like um, some inspiration. All right, and I'll do my best. I'll do my best, hopefully. So I hope y'all have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like my videos, leave me a comment, please, please. Um, I'm super excited to, to be on this new, new, new stage of my journey with Silver and Sparkles, and I'm glad you're here with me. Have a great day, everyone.